Static ropes are a critically important piece of caving gear that is often mismanaged. Whether they are your personal ropes that come home with you, or ropes that are used in a project cave that are left fixed, it's a good idea to track and clearly label them. Key things to keep track of are the length, diameter, type of rope, date of manufacture, and date the rope was first put into service. I keep a rope log in spreadsheet format to track all of this information for personal ropes. For fixed project ropes, I have a separate database that has additional fields to track the cave where the rope is installed, the location within the cave, the ideal length of rope for the rigged pitch, when it was installed, who installed it, and how it's rigged. If I encounter an unfamiliar rope in a project cave, then I record as much of this information as possible. Nylon ropes can shrink by up to 15% after getting wet. It's more common for static ropes to change by 5 to 10%, but I usually wash any new ropes in a front-loading washer with gentle soap like Woolite and hang dry the ropes in a dry shaded area such as a basement. I use cold water on a gentle or hand wash cycle with an extra rinse. Washing helps remove some of the lubricants on the rope, which may become food for mold growth and can cause inconsistent friction while repelling. It also helps pre-shrink the rope so that any cut lengths remain more reliable. There's also an argument that washing helps to bind the sheath to the core to better prevent slippage. You'll want to let the rope air dry for at least 24 hours. Once the rope is dry, you may want to run it through a carabiner a few times to remove any twists, knots, or kinks. There are various ways to measure an existing rope or pay off a desired amount of rope for cutting. Rope measuring counters, like the type you see in outdoor shops like REI, are more than $300 and not practical for the hobbyist. Some cavers will lay the rope out on a driveway or sidewalk, doubled or quartered, and then measure the length with a laser rangefinder or tape measure. Other cavers will have a pre-measured length on a table of something like 5 feet or 1 meter and will simply start at one end and count segments. I use a 50-foot fiberglass survey tape and start at one end and run both the rope and tape through one hand, resetting after each 50 feet to get the total length. To cut a rope to length, I use a soldering iron with a blade attachment. This heats up quickly and melts the ends of the fibers together as it makes its way through the rope for a nice square end that won't fray. You can find table-mountable electric hot knife cutters for under $100, but I like the portability and even lower cost of the soldering iron. This will generate some fumes, so be sure to do it in a well-ventilated area, especially if you have a roommate or spouse and want to keep them happy. With a washed, dried, cut, and measured rope, the last thing I do is apply a label to both ends. There are a few methods that range from simple to slightly complex with different levels of information. The easiest method that contains the minimum information is to record both the length and year the rope was put into service directly on the ends of the rope with a Sharpie marker. The next method is to wrap the tail of the rope with a light-colored electrical tape and write this information on the tape. It's easier to write on the smooth surface of the tape, so it's often possible to include additional information like the owner's name or perhaps the rope's diameter. However, it's also easier for the ink on the tape to get rubbed or washed away, so it's a good idea to cover the tape with a short length of clear shrink tubing. You can find half-inch diameter PVC shrink tubing on Amazon which works well on ropes below 11 millimeters in diameter. For 11 millimeter rope, I use 5 eighths or 3 quarter inch tubing. I use a heat gun on the low setting to shrink the tubing, though with care you can use a stove top or even a lighter, but keep a good distance and be sure not to get heat anywhere except for the very tail of the rope. The method I most often use when preparing ropes at home is to print the information on a waterproof Avery label using a laser printer. This allows quite a bit of information to be added, including the type of rope, the diameter, the minimum breaking strength, both the manufactured and in-service dates, and any certifications. I use the Avery 5520 label pages with labels that are 1 inch by 2 and 5 eighths inches, and I cut them down to about 2 inches in length. After applying the labels to the end of the rope, I also cover them with clear shrink tubing. I'll put links to the labels and shrink tubing I use in the video description.